Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we continue to talk about the concept of the global minimum variance. In this video, we are going to look at a two security portfolio in the interest of time. The process for a bigger portfolio would, uh, would be similar, but it would require more typing and that you know would consume some uh, extra time. And since this is just a demonstration of the process, a two security portfolio should be as good as any other. So let us begin by looking at uh, the data about the two securities that we wish to combine in a minimum variance portfolio. We have these two securities or these two assets, call them whatever you like. We have uh, the first asset, the expected return on which is 10% and the expected return on the second asset is equal to 30% and their risks in terms of standard deviations are 20 and 60% respectively. We are also supplied with an estimate of uh, the correlation coefficient between these two assets which is minus 0.2. From this information, I first of all need to find out the covariance between the two assets. So let me do that here in this cell. I know that the covariance between the assets is equal to the correlation coefficient amongst them times their individual standard deviations. So let me first of all write in the formula bar minus 0. Uh, point 0.2 which is the correlation coefficient then I multiply it by the standard deviation of 1 and then multiply by standard deviation of 2 close my bracket and I get my covariance which is minus 240. Then I also need the estimates of variance for asset 1 and asset 2. So I know that the standard deviation of asset 1 is 20 so the variance is going to be 20 squared which is 400 and the variance of the second asset is going to be 60 squared and that is going to be 3600. So that is pretty simple. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my coefficient matrix which you might remember uh, we had spelled it out in the second screencast of this series. Um, if you uh, do not uh, have it in mind I'm going to annotate it for you so that you can have a look and relate to it side by side. Um, in the first uh, cell of my matrix, I am going to write the value for twice the variance of 1. So I look at the variance of 1, it is uh, 400 and twice this value is going to be 800. So I write an 800 here. Then in the second cell, I am going to write the value for twice the covariance between 1 and 2. So the covariance between 1 and 2 is minus 240 and 2 times that is going to be minus 480. I write that here. Then I proceed ahead and write down the expected return for the first um, asset which is 10% and then in the last uh, cell I am going to write the digit 1. Then I go to my second row in which I am going to write the value for twice the uh, covariance between asset 1 and 2 which is minus 480 and then I go to the next cell in which I am supposed to write the value for twice the variance of 2. Uh, the variance of 2 is 3600 and 2 times that is going to give me 7200. I write that here. Then I move on to the next cell in which I am going to write the expected return for the second asset 30%. Then in the last cell I am going to write the digit 1 and then move on to the third row. In the third row I am going to write 1 here, 1 here, 0 here and a 0 here. Why we do that should be known to you from the second screencast in the series. Now in the last row what I am doing is I am writing the expected return for asset 1 here, the expected return for asset 2 here and then a 0 and then a 0 and that completes my coefficient matrix. Now uh, from my second screencast I remember that if I want to find out the weight vector that is I want to establish the values for x1 and x2 I need to multiply the inverse of this matrix with my this column vector the k vector here. So what I need to do is in this space here I need to find out the inverse of my c matrix. So I am uh, selecting and highlighting the portion where I want my c matrix to appear, uh, c inverse matrix to appear and then I am into my formula tab here and I select insert function and I select this one m inverse and I say OK. It's going to ask me for um, entering the array values. In Microsoft Excel, the matrix is uh, denoted as an array. So I'm going to provide the data now. I select my matrix or array and that is it. Now if I press OK here straight away, 
the value of the inverse matrix is going to be returned to me into this cell only but I want the complete matrix to do that what I should do is I should press the control shift and enter key simultaneously which I am now doing here to get the inverse matrix into this highlighted area. Now what I need to do is I need to simply take a product between the C inverse matrix and the K vector. So let us uh, do that. If I start taking the product this times this item is going to become 0, this times this item is going to become 0, this times this item is going to become 1.5 and this times this item is going to become minus 0.05 D and that is going to be equal to this whole thing is going to be equal to my X1. So basically what I have is from these two items I get a 0 and my X1 therefore is going to be 1.5 minus 0.05 times D that is what I have written here for you X1 is equal to 1.5 this one here minus 0.05 times D. So we have this complete uh, weight for X1 here. Likewise if I look at my second row this times this is going to be 0, this times this is going to be 0, this times this is going to be minus 0.5 and that is what I have here minus 0.5 and then this time this is going to be 0 0.05 times a D and that combined gives me the value for uh, the portfolio weight for the second asset. Now by varying the values of desired return D I can find out the corresponding weights. Let us do that quickly here. Let us say uh, we want a desired return of 5 percent then 10 percent, 15 percent, 20, 25, 30 and 35 and uh, I have uh, entered the formula for finding out the weights uh, into this uh, cell and this cell here. So for example, if you look at the formula uh, of uh, formula that I have entered in this cell, it is 1.5 which is this 1.5 here minus 0 0.05 which is this minus 0 0.05 here times the value that I have entered in cell A28 which is this cell here. So once I do that, I get the corresponding weight 1.25 and naturally this is going to be minus 0.25 because the sum of all weights needs to be 1. So in this cell I am checking if I really get the 5 percent desired return or not. So I have checked it here and I find that the desired return in fact is 5 percent which I wanted from here in the first place. So likewise I repeat the exercise for all the desired returns here and I get the corresponding weights in these two cells. After that what I do is I find out the variance for each of these weighting combinations. I have uh, found them out already for you and I have it on the sheet in front of me. I am going to enter those values here straight away and you will see that in the corresponding column the standard deviation value is going to be returned. So the value here for the variance is going to be 1000, it is going to be 400 here, it is going to be 360 here, uh, 8 eight zero here, one nine six zero here, thirty six hundred here and fifty eight hundred here. These variances have been found out by simply um, using the um, portfolio variance formula. I think my phone is ringing but I am going to ignore that so that we can continue with this uh, video. So please bear with the ringing noise, well let us have some fun also along the way. So what I have done here is now in the graphing space if you plot these items here the return data and the standard deviation data you get your efficient frontier here and the shape of which is concave again as it should be and the leftmost point is this point here where um, I think the return let us see if we can read it here or not the return is. Um, um, how much it is the return is 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 15 percent and the corresponding variance is 18.97 percent which is this combination here and this is the point of global minimum variance where your portfolio weight should be 0 0.75 for um, the first security and 0 0.25 for the second security and then this one again I repeat is the point for global minimum variance. Um, now we need to keep in mind that this entire exercise is based on the mean variance framework and we are implicitly assuming that uh, um, the data that we use confirms to the underlying assumptions of such a framework. 
but in reality you may find that the data has its own mind for example the returns may not be normally distributed or the mean reversion property might be violated naturally a constant debate surrounds therefore the concept of the global minimum variance um, well for now i have only this much for you uh, have a good time bye bye